Hello students and welcome to the final video of this lesson. In this video, we're going to learn an extension of our last video where we're doing pattern recognition. So here we're going to learn about something called U substitution. So let's get started. So in our previous video on the problems that we were looking at, the integrand always had the G prime of X. The derivative of the inner function was always around, but that's not always going to be the case. Okay. So even if we can multiply by constant, it, it may not always work out. So let's look at this example here where the inner function is going to be 2x minus 1. So let's write down that the inner function is 2x minus 1. So what's the derivative that we're looking for here? Well, we're looking for something that says 2. Okay, so is that part of the integrand? No, it isn't. Okay, so this is already looking a little bit different than some of the problems we've done before. Can we multiply by a constant? Well, okay, let's see what we can get to get 2. Well, because I have the x out there, so if I did, uh, I want the 2, so if I had x out there and I divided by the x, that would get me 2, great, because those would divide out. But this right here, this is not a constant. Multiplying by 2 over x is not a constant. So this is where we use a method called u substitution. So what we do when we do u substitution is, okay, we identify, all right, what is the inner function? Well, the inner function, we're gonna let that be u, and that was 2x plus one, okay? Well, let's find the derivative of that. Well, du would be 2dx. You know how we were normally finding dy dx or du dx? What we're doing is we're kind of splitting that up now. Um, so notice instead of uh, du over dx, what we're doing is we're taking that dx and we're moving it to the other side, okay? It's not technically a fraction, these are just rates, don't forget about that. So if I wanna solve for dx here, I can figure out what dx is uh, by dividing by two on both sides and I get du over two equals dx. So in this new part, what we're gonna see is, okay, what can we do with u? Can we manipulate this in any way? So we know that u is going to be 2x minus 1 uh, here from earlier. Um, I did make a little mistake, so if you caught that, um, it was just 2x minus 1. So let's solve for x here. Well, I can go uh, u plus 1 divided by 2. Well, that would get me x. All right. Now it's all about a manipulation of our integral. So as I look at this now, we're going to write the entire integrand in terms of u. So let's write this out. Well, we started with x times 2x minus 1 to the third power dx. All right. Well, I know what x is and I know what dx is and I have an equation that I can use for 2x minus 1. So let's write it out. So I know here that x is going to be u plus 1 over 2. So I'll write that in, u plus 1 over 2. I know that 2x minus 1 can be written as u, so it's going to be times u to the third power. And I know that dx is du over 2 right there. So du over 2. And that's what we mean. It's just a manipulation of everything that is right here. From here, it's about rewriting everything and seeing if we can solve for it. So let's see what we can do. So what I see here is that this is going to be equal to u to the fourth plus u cubed all over four du. Well, I can do this because I have one fourth here times the integral of u to the fourth plus u cubed du. So from here, I know how to do this antiderivative. Let's go ahead and do it real quick. So 1 fourth and then add 1 to the exponent. So that's going to be u to the fifth divided by that result. Add 1 to the exponent u to the fourth divided by 4 and then add c. Let's go ahead and send that 1 fourth into each of those. So I'm going to get u to the fifth over 20 and then uh, 1 fourth over 1 fourth. I'm going to get plus u to the fourth over 16. The last part of this, of course, this is a plus C. The last part of this is that you, you don't leave it in terms of U. U is just a symbol that helps simplify the process. You can do this without the U, but honestly writing it out and saying, okay, U is this, um, DU, DX equals this. Um, so then from there, 
we have to say what was u. Well, u was 2x minus 1. So let's go ahead and bring the 2x minus 1 back in. So 2x minus 1 to the fifth over 20 plus 2x minus 1 to the fourth over 16, all plus c. And that right there is going to be our final answer. And notice here, like, it was a lot of manipulation. It was a lot of algebraic steps, but it helps simplify everything in terms of taking the integral when we use, when we let the inner function be symbolized as another variable. So using this problem as an example, go ahead and see if you can get the second one here. Okay, so that's going to be the solution here for the second problem. The way these problems normally come up on the AP exam is these are going to be multiple choice. And what you really need to know is how these integrals can be rewritten using equivalent forms where we can let u equal the inner function. And then it says, the question might say something like, if u equals this, what is an equivalent form of this integral? So then in the end, you're really just looking for this answer in terms of a multiple choice. So there's one more question here. All right, so for this last problem, uh, this is not the same as the others because those were all antiderivatives, indefinite integrals. This one is a definite integral from zero to four. So we do, we can still solve for this the same way and we are gonna check it with a calculator in the end. You're, you are going to want to know how to handle these problems with definite integrals and u substitution. So the first thing, of course, we're going to let u equal 2x plus 1. And we're going to say, okay, du equals 2dx. So then we know du over 2 is going to get me dx. Since I have that x over there hanging out and I want to move it around, I can say that u minus 1 over 2 will get me x. So since I'm making these substitutions, what I can do is I can change my limits of integration here. What I know is I know what X is and these limits of integration are X values. So since I know that I'm going from zero to four, I can use zero and four and substitute that in. So U is gonna be two X plus one. So I'm gonna substitute zero in. So U equals two times zero plus one. So our lower limit of integration is going to be one. And then u equals two times four plus one. So our upper limit of integration will be nine. So I just take that equation, I substitute in my limits of integration and whatever my results are, my new limits of integration. So here's why um, I'm gonna do that. So first I know what x is, that's gonna be u minus one over two. And then um, I'm going to get times u to the one half, and then dx is going to be du over two. So as I simplify this, I have the one half and then the one half over underneath the uh, du. So that's gonna be one fourth. I'm gonna pull that out as a constant multiple. Still going from one to nine. And then um, I'm gonna distribute the u to the one half. So I'm gonna get u to the three halves here minus u to the one half du. All right, so let's find my antiderivative and then we'll use our first fundamental theorem of calculus. So one fourth, we're gonna get u to the five halves and then we have two fifths out front and then minus u to the three halves and then we get two thirds out front. And we're gonna evaluate this from one to nine. What ends up happening is by changing the limits of integration, we can now integrate this in terms of u. If I did not change the limits of integration, if I did not go from zero to four, um, or sorry, if I did not go from one to nine, then I would need to substitute in my values for u back in, which would just make my problem longer. So by making the substitution for u, it makes my definite integral a lot shorter with terms of the arithmetic. So let's go ahead and speed this up and calculate this to the very end.
All right, and what happens here when you calculate this to the calculator, um, you get 19.867. What I want you to actually do here for our final step is this is with all the fractions and to the power of to the fifth power, to the third power, so on and so forth. What I actually want you to do is type into the calculator or original integral and see if you're getting the exact same answer. Because if you're not, you know that there is a mistake somewhere. But if you are, you know that these two things are equivalent. Notice here that even though we're changing the limits of integration from zero to four to one to nine, we're still getting the exact same answer. And that is going to conclude this video. So of course, if you do need help with any of these three problems, you know you can reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches. Mm -hmm.